Hi, welcome to this Corporate Miles video. In this video, I'm going to go through the video solutions to the odds and even numbers practice questions. If you need any extra help on odds and even numbers, if you go to corporatemiles.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video 221A, that's a video tutorial on odd numbers and even numbers. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code and bring you straight to that video. But this video, I'm going to focus on the answers to the practice questions, so let's get started. So question number one says, list the first five odd numbers. So the first five odd numbers are one, three, five, seven, and nine. Because obviously two, four, six, and eight are all even. So we would just go up in the odd numbers, which would be one, and then skip two, three, skip four, five, skip six, seven, skip eight, and then nine. Okay, question number two. Question number two says, list all the even numbers between nine and 17. So 9 and 17 are both odd, and we want all the even numbers in between those. So the next number after 9 would be 10, and that's even. Then we've got 11, that's odd. 12, that's even. 13, that's odd. 14, that's even. 15, that's odd. 16, that's even. Then we've got 17, and then any of our even numbers would be bigger than 17. So our even numbers between 9 and 17 would be 10, 12, 14 and 16. And just remember that an even number ends with a 0, a 2, a 4, a 6 or an 8. Okay, let's have a look at question number 3. So question number 3 says, circle the odd number. So we've got 20, 25, 26 and 28. So 20, that's even, it ends with a 0, so it's an even number. 25, it ends in a 5, so that's an odd number. So 25 is odd, so we'll circle that one. 26 is even and 28 is even as well. So 25 is the odd number, so we've circled 25. Okay, let's have a look at question number four. Okay, question number four. So question number four says, circle all the even numbers. So we've got this rectangle, this box, and we've got the numbers 7, 16, 15, 29, 28, 23, and 31. And we've been asked to circle all the even numbers. So the numbers that end in either a zero, a two, a four, a six, or an eight. So 16 is even, ends with a six. And then we've got 18 is even as well, because it ends in an eight, so that's even, so we'll circle that. And then all the other numbers, they're actually all odd. So seven's odd, 15's odd, 29's odd, 31's odd, and 23's odd. So the even numbers are 16 and 18. Right, let's have a look at question number five. So question number five, we've got a list of numbers, and the list of numbers are 18, 22, 34, 41, 56, and 80. And from this list of numbers, we've got to write down an even number. So we can write down any even number at all. So there are numbers that end in either a zero, a two, a four, a six, or an eight. So 18's even, so we could write down 18. I'm gonna write that one down. We could write down 22, because it's even as well. We could write down 34, it's even, it ends in a four. 41's odd, so we couldn't write that one down. 56 is even, so we could write that down. And 80's even as well. So you can actually write down any of the numbers except for 41. I've written 18 down, but you could write any of them except for 41. Question B says, write down an odd number. Well, there is only one odd number in the list. And remember, an odd number is a number that ends in either a one, a three, a five, a seven, or a nine. So 41 is odd, so we're gonna write that down, 41. So question number six. So question number six says, here's a list of seven numbers. So we've got six, 11, 12, 20, 24, 25, and 29. And we've been told from the numbers in the list, write down an odd number. So an odd number is a number that ends in either a one, three, five, seven, or nine. So six is even, 11 is odd, so we could write that down at 11. We could then, we can't write down 12, that's even. We can't write down 20 or 24. We could write down 25 or 29. So in terms of your odd number, you could write down 11, 25 or 29. Okay, and part B says write down an even number. So we could write down six, so let's write that down. Or we could write down 12, 20 or 24. So you could write down any of those numbers, 6, 12, 20, or 24. And all the others are odd, so you can't write those down. Okay, let's have a look at question number seven. So let's have a look at question number seven. So question number seven says, Isaac says all the digits in an even number are even. Explain why Isaac is incorrect. So let's think of an even number. Let's think of an even number such as 64. 64 is even because it ends in a four. Remember, an even number ends in a zero, a two, a four, a six, or an eight. And as you can see, both digits here are even. So Isaac is correct with this number, 64, that both numbers are even and the number is even. But I can think of a number such as 96, where if you look at it, it's an even number because it ends in a six, because even numbers end in a, either a zero, two, four, six, or an eight. But with the tens, if you look at the tens, 
times column, we've got 9, and that's an odd number. So there is an even number where all the digits aren't even. So Isaac is incorrect, because not all the digits have to be even. Um, the last digit has to be either a 0, 2, 4, 6, or an 8. But Isaac's incorrect, because the other digits don't need to be even. They can be actually odd as well. So, so for instance, 178, that has an odd number in the hundreds, an odd number in the tens, but it has an even number at the end. So the 8's even. So that number is even, but not all the digits are even. So I've just explained that. So I've just written down an even number ends in a 0, 2, 4, 6, or an 8, but the other digits in the number can be odd, e.g. 72. So it has got an even number at the end, it's got that 2, but the other digit, the 7, can be odd. So Isaac is incorrect that all the digits in the even number don't need to be even. So let's have a look at our next question, question number 8. So question number 8 says, here's a list of numbers, 105, 116, 158, and 171. We've been asked to find the sum of the odd numbers. So remember the word amav sum means to add up. So we need to find the sum, add up the odd numbers. So let's find the odd numbers. Let's underline them. So 105, that's odd, ends in a 5. So that's a 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. It ends in a 5, so that's odd. 116 is even, so that's odd. 116 is even. 158 is even as well, it ends in an 8. 171, it ends in a 1, so that is an odd number. So we've been asked to find the sum of the odd numbers, so we need to add together 105 and 171. So let's write that down, 171 plus 105. So adding up the 1s, 1 plus 5 is 6, 7 plus 0 is 7, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So the answer would be 276. And part B says, find the difference between the even numbers. So if we go back up to our list, we've got our even numbers, which are 158 and 116. And to work out the difference between two numbers, you take them away. So we're going to do 158 take away 116. And when we do that, we'll find the difference between those even numbers. So 8 take away 6 is 2. 5 take away 1 is 4. And 1 take away 1 is 0. So the answer would be 42. So the difference between the even numbers in that list is 42. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number nine. Question number nine says, Andrea adds two odd numbers. Is the answer odd, even, or either? So let's choose some odd numbers. So for instance, let's choose seven and 11. So seven plus 11, she adds them. So the answer would be 18, that's even. Let's choose some more odd numbers. Let's choose 21 plus nine. 21 plus nine is equal to 30, that's even. So let's choose two more, 113 plus 5, that's equal to 118. And as you can see, whenever we add these odd numbers, we will get an even number. And that makes sense, because whenever you've got two odd numbers, they always have one number that hasn't been paired up. And whenever you add those two odd numbers together, those extra numbers will pair up, so it will be an even number. So the answer will be even. Okay, let's have a look at question number 10. So question number 10 says, here's a list of numbers, and we've got 38, 63, 42, 87, and 55. So we've got this table and we've got our two columns of even numbers and odd numbers. And then we've got two rows. One says multiple of three and then one says not a multiple of three. So let's start off with our first number. Let's choose 38. So 38 is an even number. So it's going to go in this column. So it's either going to go in this box or this box. And we need to find out if it's a multiple of three or not a multiple of three. Now here's a wee tip. If you want to find out if a number is a multiple of three, you can add the digits together. And if that answer is a multiple of three, then the numbers are multiple of three. So let's choose a number such as 15. Now 15 is a multiple of three, because if you write down the multiples of three, three, six, nine, 12, 15, it's in that list. But another way to check it's a multiple of three, I can do one plus five, and one plus five is equal to six. And six is a multiple of three, so that means that 15 is a multiple of three. Now if we choose another number that's not a multiple of three, for instance, 19, I know that 19 is not a multiple of three because the multiples of three are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 19 is not on that list. If we do 1 plus 9, that's equal to 10. And 10 is not a multiple of 3 either, so I know that 19 is not a multiple of 3. So that's just a little shortcut to see if a number is a multiple of 3 or not. So if we look at our 38, we know it's even, so we know it's going to go in one of these two boxes. And if we do 3 plus 8, 3 plus 8 is equal to 11. 11 is not a multiple of 3, so that means that 38 is not a multiple of 3. So that means that 38 is even, but it's not a multiple of 3, so I'm going to put it in this box. Another way to consider it is, if we consider our multiples of 3, we would go up to 30, and then we'd have 33, 36, 39, so 38 is not a multiple of 3. 
OK, let's have a look at our next number. So 63. 63 is odd, so it's going to go in one of these two boxes. So let's add our digits together. So 6 plus 3. 6 plus 3 is equal to 9. And 9 is a multiple of 3, so that means that 63 is a multiple of 3. So 63 is odd, and it's a multiple of 3. So let's put it in this box here. It's odd, and it's a multiple of 3. And another way to check and see if 63 is a multiple of 3, well, we know that 30 is a multiple of 3. 60 is a multiple of 3, so 63 would be a multiple of 3, just sort of considering the multiples of 3. OK, 42. 42 is even, so it's going to go in one of these two boxes. 4 plus 2, so 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. 6 is a multiple of 3, so that means that 42 is a multiple of 3. So it's, it's going to be even and a multiple of 3, so it's going to go in this box, 42. And another way to check it is, we know that 30 is a multiple of 3, so that means that 33, 36, 39, 42. So 42 is a multiple of 3. 87. So 87 is odd, so it's going to go in one of these two boxes. Let's add the digits, 8 plus 7. 8 plus 7 is equal to 15. That's a multiple of 3, so that means that 87 is a multiple of 3. So it's odd and a multiple of 3, so I'm going to put it here, in this box here. Again, another way to consider it is 30 is a multiple of 3, so is 60, so is 90. So if we take away 3 from 90, you get to 87. So that means that 87 is a multiple of 3 also. And finally, 55. 55 is odd, so it's going to go in one of these two boxes. And let's add the digits together. 5 plus 5. So 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 is an odd multiple of 3, so that means that 55 is not a multiple of 3. So it's going to be odd and not a multiple of 3. And again, another way to consider it is we know 60 is a multiple of 3, so it would then be 57 and then 54. So 55 is not a multiple of 3. Okay, so that's question number 10. Question number 11. Question number 11 says, Lucy writes down a number and the number is even and it is a factor of 14. So let's write down the factors of 14. So 1 times 14 is equal to 14 and 2 times 7 is equal to 14 and they're the only two factor pairs so then the factors of 14 would be 1, 2, 7 and 14. Now the number's even and it's a factor of 14 so it could be 2 or it could be 14 because they're both even, whereas 1 and 7 aren't even. And the question says there are two possible numbers that Lucy could have written down. Write down the two numbers. Well, they're going to be 2 or 14. And 2 or 14 are even, and they're both factors of 14. OK, let's have a look at question number 12. So question number 12 says, write down an odd prime number. Now, if you need to know what prime numbers are, go to corpmaths.com and type in prime numbers, and there's a video on prime numbers, and they'll go through in detail what prime numbers are. I'm going to write down the prime numbers now. So the list of prime numbers are 2, and then 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on. So prime numbers are numbers that only have two factors, and those factors are 1 and itself. So for instance, 2 has two factors, 1 and 2, so 1 and itself. 3 has two factors, which are 1 and 3. 4 is not prime because the factors would be 1 and 4, but you can also divide it by 2, so 2 is another factor, so it's got more than two factors. 5 is prime because you can only divide it by 1 and 5. 6 isn't prime because you can divide it by 1, 2, 3, and 6, so it's got more than two factors, and so on. And what's interesting about the prime numbers are there's only one even prime number, and that's 2, and its factors are 1 and 2, but all the other even numbers, you could divide them by 2, so they would have more than two factors. So that means there's only one even prime number, which is 2, and all the other prime numbers are odd. So if you can write down any prime number except for 2, then that will be the answer. So I'm going to choose 3, but you could write down 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and so on. OK, question number 13. So question number 13 says, write down an even square number. So let's consider what our square numbers are. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, and so on. So there are square numbers, and they're found by multiplying numbers by themselves. And we're to write down an even square number. So we can't write down 1, it's odd. We could write down 4, we couldn't write down 9, we could write down 16, we can't write 25, and so on. So an even square number could be 4, it could be 16, it could be 36, it could be 100, and so on. So as long as the square number is even, you could write it down. OK, let's have a look at our next question. OK, question number 14. So question number 14 says, is shown below are four number cards. So we've got the number cards 2, 9, 8, and 6. And using the cards, make the smallest possible two digit number. So you want to write down the smallest possible two digit number. Now, because it's a two digit number, it's going to have a number in the tens column and it's going to have a number in the ones of the units column. So we want to put the smallest number possible in the tens column. That will make it as low as possible. So, for instance, you wouldn't want to put nine in the tens because that's going to be 90 something. So let's put the two in there. So it's going to be in the twenties and that'll be the lowest possible number that we can have. It would have to have a two in the tens if we're using these. 
And then in terms of the ones, we could either have a nine, an eight, or a six. Well, it makes sense to use the six, the second smallest number in the ones column. So the smallest possible two digit number would be 26. Okay, our next question. Our next question says, write the largest possible four digit odd number. So let's write our numbers down again, two, nine, eight, and six, and let's scroll down. And we've been asked to write down the largest possible four digit odd number. And because it's four digit, we're gonna to have to use all of the numbers. Now that we want it to be odd, so that means it either needs to end in a one, a three, a five, a seven, or a nine. Now if we look at our numbers, two's even, nine's odd, so it could end in a nine, eight's even, and six is even. So the only number it can actually end in is a nine. So we're gonna to have to put the nine in the ones column. So we've got our ones, our tens, our hundreds, and our thousands. We're gonna to wanna to put our nine in our ones column. So it's gonna to have to end in a nine. And we want the largest possible four digit odd number. So we're now gonna look at the other numbers, which are two, eight, and six. We want the largest possible one. So we wanna put the largest remaining number in the thousands. Now, for instance, you wouldn't wanna put it as two thousands. We wanna put the eight at the front to make it eight thousand and something. We know it has to be odd, so the nine has to go at the end. So we've now got either a six or a two, so a six or a two. I'm gonna put the six in the hundreds, because it'd be 8,600 and something, and then put the two in the tens. So the largest possible four digit odd number would be 8,629. So what we did there was we put the only number that it could end in at the end, the nine, and then we put all the other numbers, starting with the biggest one and working our way down. And that's given us the largest possible four digit odd number. Okay, and that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the odd and even numbers practice questions on corporate maths. I really, really hope you find this video useful. And if you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you do need any extra help on odd and even numbers, go to corporatemavs.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video 221A in corporate maths or scan this QR code. And also it may have been useful to watch the video on prime numbers and square numbers for this video just because they might be useful as well. That's it. So I really hope you find this video useful and thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.